And let me conclude with this last section of that addresses the virtues of uh, Surah Al-Fatiha. One of that is that Al-Fatiha is a means of healing and treatment and cure. It's a ruqya. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu said, the group of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on a journey. On their way back, they, they uh, came across a, a tribe uh, on, their, on the path of their journey. And they wanted to sit with them and yani, they wanted to eat something, but they were not hospitable. So they stayed, they camped next to them, but not with them. So it happened that Allah decreed that their leader was bitten by a snake. Uh, other nurses say stung by a scorpion. Nonetheless, it was one of these poisonous. Uh, and they tried everything possible they knew to treat him, but nothing worked. So one of them said, why don't you go to this group, the companions. Now these people were not Muslim. Why don't you go to this group and ask them, maybe one of them knows a cure or can recite a ruqya. Ruqya in the past was anything they recite, even if it included shirk. That's why the Prophet ﷺ in one of the narrations said, اِعْرُضُوا عَلَيَّ رُقَاكُمْ لَا بَأْسَ بِالرُقْيَا مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ شِرْكًا Tell me your, the ruqya you're using. As long as there is no shirk in it, then there is no problem. Okay? So the word ruqya was used before Islam. This is what I'm trying to say. So they went to them and they said, uh, such and such happened to our master, the leader of the tribe, the head of the tribe, and we tried everything possible, nothing worked. Does any of you know how to do ruqya? One of them said, I swear by Allah, I do. But I swear by Allah, I will not do it. Because we asked you to be hospitable to us and you refrained. I will not do it until you give us something in return. So they agreed to give them 30 sheep. In the beginning they said, we'll give you a flock. The number wasn't mentioned at the end of the narration, they gave them 30. So he said, so I went to him, started reciting one verse of the Fatha after the other and spit on him, blow with, with uh, a moist uh, air. And as soon as he finished, he said he stood up as if there was nothing wrong with him and no pain in him. Notice one thing very important is that this man was not a Muslim, yet he benefited. This is the barakah, this is the blessing the words of Allah have that will benefit. Then he gave them 30 sheep and uh, offered them milk to drink. And then the group of the companions said, okay, let's split this amongst us. The one who recited the ruqya said, no, not until we go back to Medina and we tell the Prophet wasallam what we did and see what he tells us. This is something that happened, that happened on the spot and his response was spontaneous. He didn't think of this is allowed or not allowed, we don't know. Not that he thought it would be haram, but they wanted to confirm. The companions were a different caliber. <coughs> they would act but very careful with regards to haram and halal. So they went back to the Medina and explained to the Prophet wasallam. So the Prophet wasallam laughed and asked the companion who recited the Fatiha, who told you that it was a ruqya? Meaning it is a ruqya, but who told you so? And then he said, wasallam, what you did was correct. Give me a share of what you're going to be distributing amongst yourselves. This is the first benefit of Surah uh, Al-Fatiha. The, uh, the second thing pertaining to Fatiha is that it is a pillar, one of the pillars of the prayer. 
without which the prayer is null, it's invalid. Uh, Abu Huraira said that the Prophet ﷺ, and this is reported by Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever offers a prayer and does not recite the opening of the book, we said this is one of the names of the surah, Al-Fatiha, Fatiha al kitab then his prayer is incomplete, it is incomplete, is it, inc it is incomplete. He said this thrice, he said it is not complete. Uh, you have to know that the, the, the most important pillar after, of the five pillars after the two testimonies of faith is Salah. And for Fatiha to be a pillar without which this second pillar is invalid only indicates how important and great it is in the sight of Allah. It is the greatest thing in the Qur'an. As in the narration we mentioned in the beginning, that uh, when he told him, I'll tell you the, the greatest or the best surah, and then he said, Al-Fatiha. There is also another narration that is in the book of At-Tirmidhi, classified as authentic by Al-Bani. The Prophet wasallam said, I swear by the one in whose hand my soul is, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal did not reveal in the Torah or Injil or the book of Psalms or the Quran anything like it, referring to Al-Fatiha. Finally, it is a, an honored supplication. Ibn Abbas said, and this is reported by Muslim, he said, whilst Jibreel was sitting with the Prophet wasallam, he heard a voice from above him. So he raised his head and he said, Jibreel that is, this is a gate in the heavens, was opened today, only today. It wasn't opened before. And from it, an angel descended. And this angel never descended to earth before today. This angel greeted them with salam. And he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Glad tidings to you for two sources of light which no Prophet was ever granted before and you are being granted them. The opening of the book, Al-Fatiha, Fatiha Al-Kitab and the last verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. No one would ever recite any letter of it but from its supplications because if you notice the Fatiha has a supplication at the end and the last verse of Surah Al-Baqarah is also a supplication. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا إِنْ نَسِيْنَا وَأَخْطَانَا So on. With this we conclude. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.